triangles, how to finish them, how to play the position, what we can switch to when we can't get it, and of course, how to deal with all the various bullshit that they try to do to us when we're trying to get our triangle. So the first thing I want to talk about is the concept of the triangle position, okay? Because I treat the triangle position as a separate position itself. A lot of people think of it as just like a finish, okay? But when I conceptualize it in my head, I'm talking about playing it in the similar way that the Danaher guys talk about playing the reap positions. Instead of focusing on the heel hooks, they focus on the mechanics of holding it first and how to appropriately work their way to the finish. And that's just kind of how I look at triangles, okay? So let's, uh, let's talk about what goes into making a triangle good first, okay? First off, no matter where you get your triangles from, okay, however you set it up, most of the time you're not gonna get a perfect finish instantly. Okay, there's a few times where I kind of sit through and get the angle instantly, but for the most part, if you try to go for the finish, you'll be committing to locking up with a really bad angle and you have to unlock it in order to get your choke appropriately set up, okay? Or you'll get fat boy because I go for the finish and bring my leg across, and in that moment of weakness, this fat slob starts throwing my legs around, okay? And I just don't want to let that happen. So the first thing I always do, all right, as soon as I get my legs around some motherfucker's back, Okay, is I make sure my feet cross. Okay, I make sure that at the very least my big toes can say hello to each other and just kind of clamp down. Okay, this is important because this is your first frame. All right, now he can still turn me, he can still posture up, he can still stack into me, he can still do everything. So, what I need to do, as soon as my feet cross, I need to start to pinch my knees together with a lot of pressure. I need to take my heels and start to curl them down, birds back, and I'm really trying to make sure I get my hips up to bird, okay? Now that I have a pinch pressure, now that I have a curl pressure, I can start to focus on bringing him down to me, all right? So I get my feet locked up, now my knees start to pull him over top of me, okay? And you can see like, my, my clamp on my heels might come up a little bit for the most part, I wanna make sure I keep this all pretty tight, and then I start to pull him in this direction here. All right, I bring him down close enough that I can get some kind of grab, okay? Most of the time, he'll be grabbing the back of his head with either arm, uh, I can go for the underhook. If he was standing, I could hook under his leg. We'll talk about all that. But just getting this, okay? This is great. Even if he was standing up, this is all I need because now I have something to block his posture while I then take my hips and I loosen them back up a little. Okay, I want to unclamp my legs, not like this, okay? The difference is just in the pressure. So going from like this, where I'm squeezing, to that is enough because what I'm going to do is take my hips and reshoot my chin all the way up into his throat, here. Now I can take my legs and start to readjust again and get an extremely tight bite, okay? Now I'm starting to think about going for a finish, all right? But just by getting my hips shot back up to bird like this, there's now not a ton of space for him to work his hand in anymore, okay? And this pinch pressure around his shoulder and around his neck is immense, okay? You can see the angle. I'm so much further down his back, too, that he doesn't get to posture up anymore. If you go ahead and try to posture up and run, Right? The angle of my knees now and just the amount of control I have has gone up exponentially. I can just use my knees to pull them back down. Okay, and then again, I can kind of keep adjusting this up and out, get to a good position. Now I can start thinking about finishing my triangle. So just to reiterate, okay, no matter where I get my triangle, like I'll even do a quick uh, triangle entry from somewhere just so you can kind of see what's going on. Here, my feet are crossed, but I'm not finishing this motherfucker right away. So the first thing I do is, I don't care which way you cross your feet at first either. That's not gonna be the important part. That's gonna be relevant later for finishing. But whatever it is, heels clamp down, knees pinch together, okay? I start to bring him down with my knees. And if he does something like post on the mat or post his hands on you and to try to prevent him posture from getting pulled down, go ahead, post. Hey, this is easy, especially in Yogi. I can take this up all the time. Or I can do something like lift my hips up and straighten his arm, move this out, move this across, take that frame away, then pull him down. Okay, and if I get to do that, like if I get his arm across like that, it just makes my job a lot easier later on. But for the, for now, I just care about getting this position secure. Now I can block his head, okay? I do actually open my feet a lot when I do this because I have good enough control. But when I block here, I can really reshoot my legs back up and I can get a much tighter bite. Now, I can start thinking about getting an angle on it. Hey guys, if you guys are enjoying the content, please take a second to like and subscribe to the channel. Maybe hit the notification bell. 
The more the channel grows, the happier bird gets, and the happy bird is a bird that is probably tamping down on his sociopathic tendency to abuse his Hey! Hey, I'm talking here, man! Get out! Ah! Alright, now I want to talk about a couple different ways of finishing the triangle. Because there's not just one size fits all in terms of finishing triangles. There's going to be adjustments based on, you know, his shoulder size, his toughness, what he's doing with his arms, what I can possibly do with my leg length, okay? How good my pinch is. There's a lot of factors that go into this, okay? I have a... Notoriously short legs, okay? I did eat my fucking vegetables, it just didn't matter, all right? My dad's like 6'2", six 6'3", six birds fucking 5'11", I'm 5'9", in shoes, okay? So, I just didn't have a lot of luck when it came to limb size, okay? So there's just gonna be people that are so big that trying to lock up a traditional triangle isn't an option, okay? But you can still choke these people, okay? You just have to do it a little differently. So first I'm gonna show you my favorite variation on finishing the triangle, okay? And this is what I genuinely think has the tightest finish ever. It's the reason why Bert said he would never be in a triangle video with me ever again, and yet here we are. But Brian, okay. I have to. So, <laughs> I'm gonna be a little gentler on how I actually choke Bird with this, but it is fucking brutal. I've never been in anything that's been this tight before. Uh, I learned all of this from Heath Pedigo, and man, he used to choke me the fuck out when I was a white belt. Like, I just would see stars every time. If he could get his fucking toes, Clamps around my head anywhere from any position I was fucked, okay? So right away, you know, I got my, my triangle going, I start to pinch and curl, and I start to bring bird down. Now I readjust. I get my hips back up, my hips come up to him, okay? And then I can clamp. Now I have a good triangle finish position, okay? I'm lucky in this situation that he's not underneath my arm, and we're gonna troubleshoot what to do with that later, okay? But for the most part, like, if his arm is just straight like this, I don't actually need to pull it across. Okay, it's not going to matter. But for the sake of making things easier on yourselves, if you can get this across at all, it is going to make your life easier because it's going to make your shoulders narrower, and his shoulder is actually what's going to choke him on this side. Okay, my triangle doesn't actually do anything on this side. Like, my knee is not going to be touching this artery. It's his shoulder that's going to be touching that artery. Okay, so across or straight, it doesn't matter to me which one. Okay, let me get my bike back. How ahead. There we go. Okay, so here, what I'm looking for is an angle. Okay, triangle finishes at a high level, or just decent finishes, are going to be entirely based on how good you are at getting this angle. So right now, I'm going to actually take my left arm and either go over his shoulder to trap it better, okay, and reach up under past his shoulder, not shallow. I actually want to go pretty deep. I can even two-on-one this and hold it, okay? Or if he was trying to stand up, I would instead hook his leg here and use that as my angle finish. Okay, so whenever I hook, I do that, I don't let him stand up. I keep him down on his knees just with my pinch pressure and my pull pressure. I hook his shoulder. Now what I'm going to do is actually take my other hand to the back of his head and keep it clamped down. This could even go on the mat if I have good enough control. But I'm going to take my legs, I'm going to TP them up into the air. And just so you guys are aware, okay, the leg that goes over his neck is going to be the one that goes underneath this other leg, okay, down by the calf. And when I'm doing this, I'm making sure that the, tr the TP position is actually pinching my knees in together on bird, okay? So that way I have good control, all right? Now, I have a decent angle right now. If I were to just pull this down, I would choke bird a little bit. But what I really want you guys to pay attention to is my kneecap, okay? Because what I'm gonna do is rotate my hips out away from bird in an arc, like this. And if you watch my knee, my kneecap is actually turned all the way in to his neck, okay? This is what's gonna make this brutal. And I didn't pull myself as tight as I normally would. Okay, what I would do is this, okay? Or I would do that. Okay, the hand on the mat does actually help you move your hips a little bit. The higher your core control, the less you have to rely on stuff like this, okay? Now, from that position, once my knee gets turned out, I keep my knee turned out. I don't try to just clamp with my legs. I take my hand, I reach up, grab my shin, not my foot. Now I can pull that down, but I don't lose the angle on my knee. And then when my knee starts to clamp, it clamps out, okay? When I start to curl that down with my kneecap turned in, it puts a tremendous amount of pressure on the back of Bird's shoulder at an angle that particularly pushes it into his neck, okay? Now, what makes this in a super effective uh, triangle finish, other than the fact that it's the tightest possible triangle combination, okay, is I don't need to lock this up to choke you. 
Okay, actually, uh, when I'm particularly working on my squeeze, so it's something I'm actively developing and I'm doing a lot in my live matches, one of my favorite things to do is grab the ultra heavy that thinks you can't get triangled, okay? Everyone knows this guy in the gym. It's the motherfucker that's like baiting it so they can try to fat boy out. Those are my favorite people to do this to because they just don't think it can happen to them, all right? So on a big, this is big bird, we're pretending. Okay, you fat boying around, posturing up, using that size, okay? That all natty size, all right? We pull them down. You know, normally it's a little bit harder on a big guy. And when I shoot my hips back up the clamp, it's not gonna get as tight. And that's okay, I just need to prevent him from throwing my legs around to begin with, okay? Enough pinch pressure that he can't just toss my leg off, all right? Now when I go under his arm, okay? What I can do is just get here, okay? You can get to this on a, on a guy who doesn't have his arm under your back, all right? You can do it then too, it's just much more difficult here. So I get my hips out, and then though this is my finish. I don't do anything else other than just reach up and grab this and just start to pinch my knee in, okay? And I take my foot and pull it down, but I'm not gonna be able to get it under my kneecap. It'll get to about here. Now I put some curl pressure, okay? And that is enough pressure to finish someone, to choke them unconscious. I don't need to lock it all the way up. Just getting my knee turned into that shoulder with that shoulder being free to move around will choke them. This other side, when it starts to bite even a little bit, that's enough to close this other artery off. So I can be here, I can be here, and just by continuously turning out, okay, and really turning my kneecap in like this, I'll choke a big fat slot, okay? And then they will not know what the fuck happened, and it will make you feel good, all right? So that is my favorite triangle finish. I don't know what everyone else calls it, the, the TP finish. I don't give a fuck, okay? I don't care what you guys call stuff, as long as you guys can do it. Okay, now we're going to talk about some of the other ways that you can finish a triangle, and there are ways I honestly do finish a lot of my triangles, uh, depending on what's going on, okay? Like I said, the other method does take a lot of prerequisite squeezing ability, so if it's not something you're actively developing, you'll probably just get exhausted trying to do it, and it won't work for you. It's something you have to physically build your body up to be able to do, okay? So this is, again, uh, we're, we're assuming the guy's decently sized, or he's just, uh, we're just trying to finish a triangle, okay? And it doesn't have to be perfect, so again, you know, I get, his, I get him clamped, get pulled in, I get his posture down enough that I can reshoot my legs up and get a much better control position going on. Now I'm going to do an old school finish and just because it's old school doesn't mean it doesn't work, okay? So what I'm gonna do is uh, come under his arm and come to his head, okay? Or I could take my, other, take my other arm and work on getting his arm across first. This always just makes things easier, but it's honestly one of the things I try to ignore for the most part because it doesn't actually matter unless it's preventing you from locking your triangle up, okay? So like if he had his arm under my body, I would be putting effort into dealing with this because of the fact that he could open up my shoulder or open his shoulders up and prevent this from closing off to an extent, okay? Like it doesn't genuinely save him if he's doing something like this because like that was enough pressure with my TP finish to choke him, okay? Bird does have smaller shoulders though. He's more vulnerable to getting these closed off. Bigger guys, it's gonna be more difficult. Now for this triangle finish itself, once I get under here, and again, I'm making sure that this isn't under my body first. As long as it's just out free-floating somewhere, I can ignore it, okay? I can come up behind his head, I can grab my knee, but I can actually kind of take this and really clamp this across, okay? Like, this is not a bad finish. This is like a, I know it's old school, putting your foot in the head. Don't put your foot in the ground, but you can put your foot in the hip. But being able to take this angle and pull it across and really get this, bit down on his neck how you want before you come around and try to lock your triangle up is going to make it a lot tighter, okay? The more of an angle you get when I adjust like this, like you can see, can you see? I can't see you. Okay, here, you can see I'm looking down the same angle of my leg, because now when I go and lock this motherfucker up, it is so tight. And again, I'm remembering to take my leg and curl it in like this as I pinch it down. So it actually should go out. I don't want my triangle to ever bite across Bird's back like this, okay? I don't have anywhere to take this. And I don't want to be square with Bird to finish this, okay? This is actually uh, one of the most common things I see where people lock a triangle up like this, square, and then they fucking squeeze for five minutes. And then uh, their legs end up just opening and the guy doesn't tap with the match ends and the guy didn't tap. The problem is whatever angle you initially lock your triangle up at, that's what it's stuck at, okay? So if I got my bite all the way into a triangle like this, down his back instead of more across his neck, okay? I can adjust my angle after this, 
And it doesn't really matter because it doesn't change the angle of the triangle. I would actually have to unlock my legs, readjust my triangle angle, then lock it up in order to make the angle more effective. So if you're wondering why your triangle is not working for whatever, re you know, whatever's going on, you know, you can just look at the angle. And if it's not there, you actually do have to open it back up and then do whatever variation you have to do in order to fix your triangle, okay? So that's a very square, triangle finish into a good triangle finish, okay? Using my foot of his hip in order to adjust my legs. And just real quick to recap any details, uh, this arm underneath here, when it comes under his shoulder, okay, especially in a position like this, there are times I will come up and just grab my own leg in order to really dominate this side, okay? It's not something I do all the time, but it is a small detail that gives me a little more control when I start to think about doing this, okay? just keeping him down while I start to adjust these angles, okay? And I don't want my foot to be in the mat or ever. Well, I don't want my foot to be on him for particularly long, okay? If Bird's really paying attention, if he clears my foot, I have a problem, okay? And I'm probably gonna have to do something extreme to fix this. So let's not fuck up the first time when you put your foot in his hip, pay attention to what's going on down there. You'll feel the second he tries to kick over, and if you have pressure to follow it, that's great. Otherwise, let it kick over, just make sure it comes off. Okay, or make sure it goes behind him somewhere. Don't let him actually pin your foot, okay? And again, it's about the angle first, then you finish your triangle. And remember to turn your knees in, okay? Pinch your knees together, curl your leg in and down, take this one, flex this part of your knee. And now this is really important. This is on a lot of your triangle finishes. People miss this detail, even though it's incredibly relevant. You need to be pinching your knees together to finish these, okay? It's not just the curl. A lot of people really do think that me curling this leg down is the, the pressure that's choking them. It's not, okay? That might help close off the other side, but not this side, okay? What's gonna choke him is gonna be my knee pinching in and pinching his shoulder into his artery, okay? So those are some simple triangle finishing details. And now we'll go into the troubleshooting how to do this when we, uh, run into weird scenarios. All right, now we're gonna troubleshoot some of the bullshit we run into when we're doing these triangles, okay? And there's a lot of fucking weird stuff that can happen, especially if you don't take the time to clean up your, your clamping mechanics and just thinking of it as a position first, okay? So let's start with the simple stuff. What do we do when they put their arm under our body and just lock up like a fuck, okay? And this is super common, especially against big strong guys. You know, the second you get your triangle locked up, they go, oh fuck. Let me just squeeze this little bastard, okay? And then they start to squeeze you. Or they start to really open up on the shoulder here, and that makes it really hard for me to get a good angle to clamp, okay? So, something I do take a second to do, all right? And again, you have to have really developed muscles for this. You have to be an athlete, okay? You just can't get exhausted squeezing something. So it's something you can develop by going back and doing conditioning drills, and uh, there's just a lot of ways to build up this development. You can practice squeezing people, Okay, um, I have some drills that I'm going to share with everyone eventually about how to, I develop my body to do this. But I usually do try to do a TP hip angle to see if I can just get his arm to pop out. Okay, or see if I can close his shoulder off enough to choke him while his arm is under his body already. So what I'm going to do in this position, okay, I'm always going to take the time to fix my triangle and get it a little higher, get a little bit of a better clamp down his back. Okay, because that gives me a lot more pinching here. Okay. Now I'm going to come off to the other side and I'm going to start to pull myself in this direction. Okay, this underhook that I'm grabbing, I'm grabbing high in the shoulder and I can even use two arms, okay? And then I'm gonna talk about different things I can do with this, but first let's try to get his arm peeled out. Okay, so now that I've got a better angle, I'm going to start to TP my legs up and I'm gonna do this with a lot of pressure. And something you can do, okay, is try to retract your leg a little bit when he's pretty stable and try to clamp a little higher on his shoulder. Okay, so instead of being back down like this, this was for control to get him down and get control of the position. Now I can start to bring my knees back and I can clamp closer to his elbow. So the pinch pressure now is gonna turn into rotational force on his arm, which is gonna make it much harder for him to keep his arm under my body when I start to move my hips out. So I can come on this other side and two on one. I start to TP. He's already, he tapped. <laughs> Guys, he, uh, let's turn. Is that uh, choke or shoulder? Yes. Choke and shoulder. Okay. 
So let's do that again here. Now he's really fucking fighting you. Okay, and there are gonna be times where you can't get the center hook on the other side. It's not like it's always just poking out. Uh, most of the time it is just poking out though. It's something that if you're paying attention, you can have very close to 100% success rate on getting because like as I'm shooting my triangle and I get this locked up and I start to bring him down, I preemptively start to make sure that this underhook is, is good for me. I get at least my hand in, okay? And from my hand, I can really start to pull and curl, start to adjust my hips. And you see, I'm trying to retract that back. Now let's put some pressure up. And that got his hip to come out. That got his arm to come out. He's tapping to both the choke preemptively because it is fucking his ass up. And he's also tapping to the pressure on his shoulder, okay? But you can see just that pressure alone has potential to end the match, even if he has his arm locked under my body. Okay, now let's pretend he's a little stronger and a little bigger and I'm really locked down, but I still have the underhook, okay? Now I can start to try to do this and nothing's really working. He's much tired at this point. So instead what I'll do, I'll come over here and I'll make sure my clamp is vicious so I don't get fat boy, okay? And now I'll two on one this underhook and I'll start to really start to peel that. And there's a lot of times I can get his hands to disconnect with double pressure rotation over here. I'm taking this and rolling this through, okay? And if I can get his hands to unclamp, especially in Nogi, there's a good chance I can start to tilt my hip up and free this arm. You better keep it under me for a second, okay? Something like me, Lifting my hips up, I'll release the clamp. It makes it very likely that I can dig an underhook on this side, or I can reach under, get under his hand, and start to peel that up and across. And that would be all I need to do. However, there is an easier option. It's something I might try to do if I feel like I can do it, but if I can roll this arm up to my head, a lot of times I can actually finish this as a straight arm. Okay, but again, don't go to do this, over focus on this, and get your legs thrown off. That would just be a travesty. <laughs> we don't want it to happen. All right, let's back up again. One more. What you said? Okay. So there's a couple ways to deal with it. Those involve going under hooks on this side, but what if that underhook is just completely not available? All right. So now we're here again. Rebite. Readjust this. Don't be lazy on this. Okay, now I'm actually going to focus on this side. Okay. So something I can do. So I can take my knee, start to retract it a little bit, okay? Use that clamp. You see this one's coming like kind of way across his body now? The reason why is because when I take my knee over it and I do this, I almost like lock up a backwards triangle. It's something you actually could do. I don't like, oh, it's not a backwards triangle, sorry. It's like preemptively locking my triangle. This isn't gonna choke him, but it might reinforce my, uh, my bite pressure enough. But what it does do is give me a little bit of extra hip mobility, okay? I actually don't like locking it up fully. I prefer it to be about halfway, because then I can really start to move my hips out, okay? And it's kind of like your Kimura pressure. You know, when you have a Kimura and the guys are hiding it, your hip is actually what's gonna take that out. It's the same thing here, okay? My other hand comes across, okay? And I will grab his elbow. Sometimes I'll two on one his elbow like this. And now, like I can even switch my feet too, because sometimes your knee pinching on his shoulder is gonna give you more rotation than being here. Okay, so there's really a lot of variation going on, but just being able to do this pressure here, like get that pressure to kind of like turning in knee pressure to move my hip out is gonna help expose this arm. Okay, and right now he still has his legs locked up. I'm gonna go ahead and unlock those. I'm pulling this up at the same time, my foot's gonna go on the hip, and there's enough pressure now to get that open right away. I could underhook that and peel that up, okay? Sometimes I'll do the straight arm on this side also. It just depends on how much resistance I'm getting from him. If he's really fighting me on this, we're just gonna choke him. Okay, I'll keep taking this across. Now, if you feel like there is enough underhook pressure, or space for an underhook, where I can rotate it enough, go just stay up, okay? Sometimes I can take my hip away from his arm. So when I come in this, keep it tight. When I come in here and grab over it, sometimes I can take my other hand under, like this, okay? And now, while well, I'll push my hip past him, making sure I reinforce my clamp on the left side, because now there's a little bit of space that when I start to move my hips to the other side, I open up that opening by his elbow, and then I can snake my hand in. Now, if I can get my hand in, he's in a lot of fucking trouble, because now I can really start to two-on-one this, okay, and I can put so much pressure down by rotating this way to get it out, all right? 
Now I've got his arm out, make sure you at least get it on the other side instead of being lazy with it because why not? Okay, so if I get stuck here from his just shoulder pressure and everything, he squares up, starts pushing into me, you will lift your hips up off the ground. Bring this elbow across, okay? And I like to make sure I at least get his tricep line into my hip flexor itself. Okay, because now when I bring him back down, my body alone, like just my knee, legs, and core should block this arm from pulling back to the other side. Go ahead, pull it out. Okay, it's pretty stuck, and you can see this is a good angle. So now I can come over here, and I can go under his arm, or if I really feel like I might lose it, I'll take a second to go over his arm so I can put some downward pressure and trap it. Now I can rotate my hips out. Okay, Bird is getting fucked up in these triangles, so I'm gonna be really try to ease off on the pressure. They were just troubleshooting now. So those are some of the ways I deal with uh, their arm being stuck under my back. And let's talk about the obvious one, okay? Where we, we just can't get this motherfucker unclamped. Nothing I'm doing is working. I'm probably not gonna get the triangle at this point because I just can't get anything going. There is nothing stopping you from taking your knee, pinching down and just switching to an normal plot, okay? A lot of times it's a good option. If you really need a sweep right now, you don't think you can finish the triangle on the guy. There's whatever your reason in your head, it is a valid option, okay? And it's one I do take decently often, okay? So, yeah. So that is dealing with the arm stuck under your body. All right, another thing we're gonna run into really often is gonna be the, the fat boy, okay? And I don't know what you guys like to call it, but this is how I look at it because it's something only big people will really try to do because they can get away with it sometimes, okay? It's just that guy who wants to turn, okay? He, it's almost like a gear doing a death roll out. He is trying to turn and throw your legs off in a technical way, okay? So how do we deal with this, okay? First off, the tighter your clamp is and the more time you've had to adjust it, the better off you're gonna be, all right? Because like if I try to underhook this arm on this other side, this is not gonna stop me from getting fat boy because it's really his shoulders that are gonna do the work, all right? So to weather the storm better, like if I have more time to really try to clamp and pinch my knees, now go fat boy, it doesn't just slip off. But you can see, he can still turn me, okay? So I can't be thinking about finishing it yet until I've really adjusted and fixed what's going on with this fat boy nonsense, okay? So if I can't prevent him from turning me at all, okay, and getting that angle initially, what I'm gonna do, okay, go ahead and start, is I'm gonna go with it, here. Okay, I'll rotate myself under, so that way I can start to reach up and grab him and really fix what's going on. Okay, it's great that I can get this underhook right now. That's just not always there. A lot of times that it's arms under my body. Okay, so what I'm gonna have to do is when he goes to fat boy, I rotate with him, okay? And now that I've got my chest, let's me. You see my chest now is kind of lined up with the shoulder. So I'm not taking this turn pressure on this side anymore. Okay, he's kind of stuck. When you go ahead and turn. He's stuck here now. And something I'm doing is taking my hand to the outside, bracing it on the mat, and bracing my knee with it here. Okay? Because now when he tries to keep turning, all of that weight is just going into this knee first, and that's just going into my hand, which is reinforced by the mat. Okay? Now I have time to take my arm and dig my underhook, deal with this stuff, or grab his head, ideally, and then reshoot my triangle and get it tight. Now it's tight as fuck down his back, and I have a good clamp, I have a good pinch. Go ahead, fat one now. Can you at all? Here, no hands, fat one. Okay, so what's happening is this knee is so much better positioned in order to block this turn on this side. For him to put pressure here, he would have to beat this first by pinching that down, okay? But when I reclamped and reshot and got my pinch better, you can see my knee line turns in significantly more. So now when he goes fat boy out, I'm taking the pressure here first instead of here. So that is a good way to deal with the fat boy nonsense, is make sure we play the position itself first and not jump the gun on finishing our triangles. Okay, now we're gonna deal with big posture, okay, from Big Bird, all right? This is a guy who is just trying to hulk his way out of your triangle. Not, he might be trying to fat you at the same time, he might not, but really they're just looking up and they're trying to get out, all right? Wrestlers are notorious for being able to do this effectively. 
because they're actual athletes and they take the time to develop their back and their core and their neck muscles. Okay, so I get, I get, let's say I get a really terrible clamp first too. So now we're posturing up and we have a fucking problem right away. All right, uh, like I see, the more he gets up, the more effective any of the variations that get out he's gonna do are gonna be. If he turns right now, that motherfucker is gonna go for a ride. Okay, so I'm entirely dependent, especially Nogi, on just my ability to clamp. Yeah, and the fact that he could just bring his arm back to the inside, right here from this space that I let him have is a problem, okay? So sometimes you're dealing with a lot of different stuff at the same time, all right? But the fundamentals are gonna be the same, okay? So even if I can't get this, let's, what do you do with this arm? Hide it, push off me, okay? Stand the fuck up, all right? Remember, your fuck off, I'm, little, I'm so much littler now, <laughs> come on. But as soon as I can get my big toes clamped, okay, I'm gonna pretend I'm Heath back in the day triangling myself. No matter how high I was, if he could touch his toes, I was going to sleep, okay? So again, the first thing you do, if I can't pull him down to me, okay, is I'm going to pull myself up to bird here, okay, by clamping my legs down like this. And now I'm gonna go back and forth between one leg adjusting and the other leg adjusting here. Here, you can see I'm getting higher and higher each time. Mm. Now when I lock my legs up, I have some power behind him. I've fixed this position so he can't bring his arm in as easily. I've got a much better clamp across his back where my pinch pressure is on his shoulder and his neck. Now, go ahead, keep posturing up. Now I can start to focus on bringing him down, okay? And sometimes you want to get him down a little bit, okay? I could, I could bring him to my chest right now. You can honestly let go, watch. <laughs> I could overload that for him, okay? I just have the leg strength to do that. Okay, pretend I can't do that, but I can get him down enough, I can actually get his head to curl a little bit. Once I get his head to curl a little bit, the, um, the posturing up is just no longer nearly as effective, okay? And the way to get someone to curl their head is not to grab their neck and pull down their neck. It's to rotate and curl over the top, okay? Almost like by the crown of their head this way, all right? This is just wrestling stuff, okay? Now, whatever I have, even if he's pretty high up, good posture, if I get a little bit of this, Okay, I can grab anything I need to in order to now take my hips and I'll open, shoot up again like I'm reshooting the triangle. Now I can clamp even tighter, bring him down even more, get a better position. And now I can reclamp and readjust. Sometimes I shoot my hips up three times. It's just whatever I need to do to get the position secure. And then I go from the position secure to the finish. So again, big bird, posture it up. My toes are touching, I'm kind of happy. Start to bring him down a little bit. I was actually able to pull myself up to him there and grab his head. That's also an option. Uh, if they're so tight, go ahead, did you want to do that again? Here. Okay, okay. that is also an option, but um, a lot of times that's difficult to do. Okay, go back. Good posture, here. So now I've got my triangle locked up. I get my hips up. Now my other leg starts to clamp a little higher. Now my other leg does, and I just start to kind of drag him down towards me until I can grab something. And then once I can get his head, now I feel pretty good about really shooting my hips back up and adjusting, and then really bringing my knees into my chest and breaking his posture down. Then we adjust for the finish. So that's dealing with big posture. Now we're gonna be dealing with leg fuckery. Okay, different ways they can use their knees in order to try to get out of your triangle and be annoying, okay? This first one is something that people do. If they can, they bring in their knee and they use that to kind of pinch your hip and what that does is block you. So when he tries to pouch your backwards and he tries to turn, I don't get to follow it as freely. It's really doing a lot of bad to my triangle and I don't like it. Okay, luckily this is a pretty easy one to deal with, okay? Again, so I have to have my feet clamped a little bit. If I didn't, I don't really have a triangle yet, okay? so. I can't bring him down either because trying to just pull him down really pulls him into his own leg and he has a good frame there. It's really doing a lot to reinforce his posture. So what I'm gonna do is take my arm, okay? And kind of brace it against the bottom of his foot, okay? And my other hand is gonna kind of come and grab his knee line. And what I wanna do is almost kind of pinch his own knee line in because when I start to take my right arm through like that, I can flick it out, okay? And something I did with my legs to make that a lot easier is I shift his weight to the left, okay? Because if I let him keep all his weight on this leg, I'm not moving it, it's not going anywhere. It's all of his weight on that foot. So when I go here behind his knee and start to turn it in a little, when I go under his foot and start to push out a little, I'm gonna take my legs and shift him 
to the other side in order to flick that out. Now, it doesn't always just come out that easily. A lot of times you'll need to do something like actually grab underneath like this and grab his foot and then use the offset of the weight to drag it out. And now I can just kind of block it and come to his head or come to his shoulder, or come under his arm, whatever I need to do while I start to refix my triangle clamp, okay? And now I'm not gonna let him bring that back up. Even if he does, I won't let him bring it to the inside of my hip. So if it's on the outside of my hip like that, it's really not that big of a deal, okay? I can just start to come around to the other side. It's only when he combines that on the inside of my hip with already then having posture that this is a problem. Okay, so we can kind of push it, we can drag it. Uh, I wouldn't really spend a lot of time underhooking this side, but if you do feel like you have enough control up here to ignore this, you can feel free to go for that. Just kind of like bringing this down, readjusting the clamp if you can, if you can ignore this, and then start to adjust my angle. This isn't always going to be something that's hard limiting your triangle. Okay, sometimes it's just there and it's annoying, but it's not a big deal. And then other things guys like to do with their legs are sit back and throw it over, okay? Um, I actually know a guy who is dangerous when he's in your triangle because he fucking puts you in the crucifix. Uh, Brad Schneider, if you're ever going with him, don't triangle him. <laughs> like, he's actually genuinely good at going from where Bird is to the crucifix on you. And then he taps people from there. So he lets people put him in triangles to get out. Okay, so we're gonna not let that fucking happen to us, okay? So when you got a guy who is trying to just throw his legs up and over, don't take the bait and don't let him get his leg around you here. Because if I lose my clamp, I've lost the triangle, okay? So we'll, we'll even say he, first off, I would try to block this, all right? Um, the way that I would block this is by not letting him have the separation between my chest and his head that he has. So you prevent this by having good clamp mechanics and good pull mechanics. It's like being able to move and adjust your angle while being extremely tight to him and while he's extremely tight to you. So something like this position, he's not throwing that leg up and over because I'm just following him. Okay, I'm just staying tight. All right, so that's preventative. Let's say that you get it over a little bit. Okay, here, I'm gonna try to block it push it back out and then get sat up to him and then bring him back down like this or just bring him down to you with your knees. Okay, now if he does get it over, I can't lose my clamp. I can't lose my clamp. And also, holy shit, you are in for a bad time if he triangles his legs right now. Okay, if he's able to lean and triangle, I'm actually gonna have to unhook the triangle and get that leg off of it. It's gonna be a fucking mess. So. Is sit, go back down anywhere? Try No, just back up. Here. So what I'm gonna do when he kicks that leg over is make sure he can't fucking triangle me. And I'm gonna take my left arm down, if I feel like he's going for it, and just block his shin or block his knee. Don't let them attach together. It is bad news, okay? Now, I need to make sure my clamp is good. No matter what, even more so than getting this leg off, I can't lose the clamp on my legs. So if I feel like I need to, if I can, if I can reach him, I'm gonna come up, grab, and fix this, and really get my legs tight again. That gives me a lot more pressure to deal with this, okay? Because I can sometimes do something like this quickly and pull it off, but let's say he's really got this tight. Okay, now like, my hands aren't gonna do it. My hips are what's gonna do it, okay? And I can't use my hips the way I want without first readjusting my clamp to make sure it's tight. Okay, go ahead, go back to your work. Just give me some pressure here. Okay, like you're trying to try or push me off, okay? Now I can take my hips up and I can actually swim through this. Take that out, get reattached to him. Don't let him bring that back over. And now I can start to attack my triangle again. So that is a good way to deal with that leg when it comes over. Okay, is it either pre prevent it by blocking it or prevent it by bringing his posture down or whatever, okay? And then we're gonna get this one out with our hip pressure, with our circle pressure, by pushing it off. Whatever we need to do, but we need to have this clamp tight. Yeah, let's actually talk about that. Because it's not likely, okay? Because that leg, if you, I think if you can kick it over, I'm like, I'm still gonna finish the triangle on you. I'll just finish it from here, okay? Obviously, if I just let him kick it over and peel off right away, I lose the triangle. But you shouldn't have that happen to you because you know how to bite your legs and pinch and use your clamp pressure. Okay, so a guy that kicks this leg over, you actually just keep his arm or adjust your hips and you finish this triangle from here. Okay, so that's not a big deal. But it, I mean, it's a good idea to bring it up, so.
and troubleshoot. All right, as you can see, we're in completely different rash guards because we forgot to show this. <laughs> and I had to come back and my other rash guard is no longer clean. So, this is a troubleshooting when they try to stack you from your triangle. Okay, and I'm going to assume your triangle clamp is pretty shitty. That's normally why you're getting stacked. Because if you're tight and they try to stack you, you can usually just lift your hips up and keep them from doing that. You can like push your hips, turn your angle, and you're okay. Okay, let's say it's a little bit of a looser clamp, not as ideal. And the different ways you can stack you is, uh, you know, sometimes they actually do. <laughs> hey, you would think this wouldn't work at black belt, right? <laughs> but sometimes they stack you with their arm across your neck because they don't know what the fuck to do. Um, this actually can be dangerous in the gi if they do come down and grab your belt and actually really start to stack you, okay? Other times they stack you is with an arm still under their body. Uh, that is not as bad of a deal though because he actually ends up just giving this arm away. When he stacks, his shoulders completely isolate themselves. Like he's leaning over you now, whereas before he had his shoulders with him and he was able to keep a good frame. So we'll start with this one because it's the easier one to deal with, okay? When somebody tries to stack into me, I'm going to shoulder walk my way out initially when he first tries to come into me, but instead of just going back, I'm going to go back and try to get an angle. So when he starts to stack, I'm gonna go this way on this one because for him to stack me, really he's gotta put his other arm on the mat or do something with it. That means his hands aren't clamped. So just my hip rotation alone should be able to peel that out. And now if the fucking guy commits to stacking from here, okay, he starts to stack, all right? Come up, clamp. I say I didn't shoulder walk yet. I'll assume it didn't work. And from here, I can start to shoot my hips back up, okay? And now because again, he's isolating himself so much, this is one of those times where I'm going to just reach you and get my angle on the triangle because he, he really has no shoulder frame to protect his neck right now. He can't do anything to my hips. I get free rotation to the outside, okay? So that can come in a triangle finish, all right? So look at you stacking me. I'm going to shoot my hips up. Hips go out, knee turns in, and I finish it, okay? Sometimes you also rotate on the side of his arm. All right, now I start to peel and lift my hips up, and there is my armbar. Okay, just like we talked about in the mechanics in the armbar, I'm bringing my knee down a little bit lower on the shoulder, not so low that I risk losing the elbow, but that really helps me pinch it in and control this, okay? And if he's still stacking into you at this point, when you have his fucking arm isolated, go under the far side like this. Okay, this is kind of like armbar 101 stuff, but what I'm gonna do, is roll under. Okay, you can curl. Ah. It's tight. It's tight. All right. So, uh, I'm gonna have to show that one more time. I'll try not to choke you as much. I'll just focus on the armbar. <laughs> okay, sorry. So I'm here. He's trying to stack me. I use that to adjust my hips out. I take my left arm and I hook across under his shin or under his knee, um, in the front of it actually, so you can see what I'm grabbing. It's like the back of my hand hooks here, okay? Now you pull yourself. <coughs> While I'm doing that, the choke itself is getting way tighter, okay? The point for me though, is to roll him over. Because he's come under, this is what will end up happening, and then we'll finish this, okay? Or he'll tap to the choke, okay? If you feel like you can finish it, just by lifting your hips up, go for that. But some people do stack you too tight and things don't work out right. So we have to roll through in the arm bar, okay? Just had to make sure I added that in. So I just wanna show something real quick. You're gonna have to turn it this way actually. Uh, guys, don't let people stand up in your fucking triangles, okay? If they stand up with this leg, I'm just going to pull them down at an angle so I can hook their arm on the other side now if he commits to standing up, he'll have to elongate his shoulders right there, and that's when I'm gonna finish my choke, okay? If he managed to pick me up from here, this is tight enough, and we're on mats, I'll get picked up. I'll eat the swing a little bit. On concrete, I will not, okay? So like if I was here and here, and I couldn't keep him down like this, okay? I'm gonna next try to hook his legs. He has to put two legs up here, and I'm gonna come through and grab his arm, if I can. Okay, if that arm is gone, I'm gonna take this really deep and take that leg out from under him, 
Okay, I am not gonna let someone pick me up in a triangle. Okay, not in a match where if he goes unconscious, he's gonna slam me. Okay, not in a tournament setting where the guy can slam me out of a submission and fucking for damn sure not in the streets. Okay, so I did a, a submission grappling fight in a cage when I was younger, and the guy put me in a triangle. And this was very early on in my judo stuff, and I uh, I let him pick me up all the way up over his head. And all I do is like hold on to the back of my foot and grit my teeth and make sure my head wasn't gonna hit the mat. That motherfucker slammed me so hard, okay? And then from everyone else's perspective, it looked like he slammed me into the triangle. I locked it up, I choked him, I won the fight. But if he had gotten out of that triangle, I was in trouble, dude. He knocked the fucking wind out of me. Like, I was genuinely, so don't, yes, you will probably get the submission, uh, not on concrete, period, you'll die. But like on mats, you'll probably get the submission if they slam you. But if you bounce your head off the mat, it's gonna suck. And just having your, your back hit flat when you don't have any way to break fall, you know, you're gonna take damage. So just keep that in mind. We wanna hook something, and we don't wanna just hook and hold it, we wanna hook it and take it out from under him. We don't wanna let him actually stand up, ever. All right, now I wanna point out one more big thing you guys should be utilizing in your triangles, and it's something that guys like me and Marcelo Garcia and us short-legged kings out there have to do, okay? A lot, because we have short, stubby fucking legs and sometimes the triangle is no longer the optimal option, okay? I want an arm barber, okay? And not like a straight arm like I showed from a couple different positions. I want to take this fucking thing home, okay? From here down, that is mine. It is a trophy, all right? So I have to break it in half first. So first thing we do, you know, we get our clamp. We get some kind of triangle position going. Okay, whatever it is. I do want to have a lot of pinch pressure when I go to do this kind of a submission, okay? But something a lot of people don't notice that's going on when we're doing this submission is I'm going to make sure that my knee actually rotates out further down here. I don't triangle it up high past his shoulder. I want to triangle it down lower on his shoulder, so around here, okay? Now, when I pinch that off, I can bring my knee to the inside of his neck, and this is really closed off now, all right? So now when I triangle my legs, maybe it chokes him a little bit, but that's not really what I'm looking for, but I get so much isolation on this arm, okay, that it is incredibly easy to just make sure his arm rotates over, okay, I have the thumb up or thumb turned here, okay? And then we can just start to lift our hips. Uh, a lot of times you don't need to even triangle your legs, okay? But I wouldn't want to do the triangle from here, Okay, go ahead, just like push back in. Fix it. Okay. Like, I wouldn't want to lock there try to go for the arm bar by doing something like this. This isn't likely to work super well. Um, it's not that you can't just, like, push it down into the pocket of your hip and try to finish it like this, but they're going to react, and they're going to turn and roll their arm, roll their shoulders, kick their legs over. Like, things are going to make that not effective for the most part. Okay? So instead, you say I can't try on my legs at all, but I do want to arm bar. Like I said, I'm going to take my knee down here. Okay, whatever I'm doing, two on one, really pulling this arm, or maybe I'm on the other side underhooking this arm. I do want to make sure I get control of this. Like, I wouldn't do this if it was under my body, obviously. I would get it out first, okay? But when I start to pull this up, that takes the pressure off of my thigh. Okay, because anyone here is always, you know, they're pushing their elbow back, trying to lock down your mobility, okay? So when I start to two on one this and pull, that frees my hip pressure up to come around like that, okay? Here, and this is enough. If I don't triangle my legs right now, just my pinch pressure, trying to pinch my knees together, is enough to finish this arm bar. Obviously, it is better if I can clamp a triangle from this position higher up his shoulder, because it's a lot more isolation of his arm, and I get more uh, downward force to lift my hips up into the air. But, okay, we can't always triangle our legs. Again, like if this was Big Bird, like here. <laughs> Here's what I would get to, probably, without getting a good angle. But you can do this one square, okay? So, go ahead, just like square up, okay? Uh, resist a little, okay? So here, make sure we get this down, reshoot our triangle. I'm now using a combination of my knee pressure pulling back into his elbow and pinching my knees in to free this up. Two on one in this. I can even lift my hips off the ground a little bit to make this easier. So I could just pull this, his elbow, anywhere off of my hip a little bit. I don't need a lot of space. It doesn't need to go to the middle. I just need to be able to rotate my hip out like that. Now I clamp. Now I triangle. Now I break. 
Okay? So, the Marcelo Garcia triangle armbar combination for us short-legged motherfuckers out there. Okay, now I want to leave you guys with some physical conditioning drills that you can do in the gym with a partner. You don't need free weights or you don't need machines, even though those are going to be very effective at building up your, your core and your leg, okay? I just want to give you guys some clamping drills that I, that I actually do all the time. All right. The first off is a very generic uh, fuck his rib cage type exercise. Okay. So I'm in closed guard. All right. My goal right now is to get my guard as tight as possible. Okay. So I'm making sure I'm shooting my hips past him. My knees clamp well. Okay. My heels curl in. And now the focus of this is to do three things. Okay. One is to pinch my knees together through his ribs as hard as possible. And I mean genuinely trying to learn your limits when you do this type of drill, okay? Uh, this bird can be replaced with a bob dummy, or he can be replaced with a heavy bag or a medicine ball or anything you can kind of squeeze that's going to give a little bit, but also not just cave, okay? Hopefully his rib cage doesn't cave. I won't squeeze him as hard as I can right now because, uh, <laughs> yes, I want a bird to be alive. So. What I'm going to be doing with that, my knees pinch in as hard as I can. I want my heels to curl down, almost like I'm lifting myself to bird, okay? And I'm still doing my pinch. And then the third variation for this, and you can do these in a, you can do them separately, I guess, but I, I do them all together, okay? So I'm going to take my knees and lift bird over my head and down, okay? Uh, that way I can negate whatever frame he has to do using, so if he was like framing narrow, Okay, I can't just pull my knees to my chest. He's going to be here and blocked. So instead, I lift him up and over. Pinch, curl, and I go for 30 second rounds as hard as I can, okay? And it'll be 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. Repeat until death. All right, and you do this a couple times a week, okay? So that is a first highly beneficial exercise that I do, all right? I notice a huge difference in my clamping ability, not just from here, but from other places when I'm incorporating this into my workout routines. Now, another one that's fun to do for you, not so much for them, okay? Actually, this one's not so bad. It's just gonna be able to move myself side to side and adjust my hip angle with only really my knees in play. So I'm not gonna use my arms. So what I'm gonna do here, the guy is just gonna kinda of keep his arms a little extended. He's not really gonna just block your hips, okay? I'm going to bring one leg up. It's going to pinch in as the other leg climbs up. And I'm going to rotate my whole body with just my pinch pressure, okay? And now what I'm going to do at the end of this is make sure I curl a little and I'm going to give a lot of pressure to my other knee. And I'm going to try to kind of pinch my knees together through bird here. And that is going to be for like 10 seconds at the end of that, okay? And go back and rotate out to the other side. Notice I'm really just making sure I move my body. Now pinch and curl your top leg. Curl your left knee or your right knee in right now. Really try to put a lot of pressure inwards like this. And that's your exercise. You just keep going back and forth. You don't have to always give the extra squeeze at the end. I like it because it helps me reinforce my pressure. But you can do this exercise as a variation of uh, just reps. Okay, something like one, two, three, four. Okay. And you can just find your failure point. Sometimes it's going to take 30 reps. Either way, you're going to be getting a lot of uh, benefit neurologically and teaching yourself to move in the right way with your legs instead of having to use your arms to manipulate yourself. Your arms can now be doing other things like digging under hooks, clamping on his head, whatever. Okay, now for power. Let's put some power into this. All right. Bird is going to put his arm under my back from a triangle. Okay. What's your idea of just don't hurt my shoulder. Okay. And now this is just another variation on clamp pressure and hip mobility. Okay. He is going to keep it pretty fucking tight. Okay. But I like to tell people to give him, like, normally I would want him to give someone else uh, enough resistance to, bro, you gotta stay, buddy. Okay. My dog just actually got upstairs and I can't get up to fix the video. So if he's in the video, I'll off the mat. Off. So we just had a wild riddle up here and walk into the frame and walk on the mats and attack us. Uh, so he got through the barrier between the downstairs and the upstairs. He's very smart. So anyways, 
the kind of resistance I want Bird to give me is going to be dynamic based on what I can do. So like he shouldn't actually just clamp so hard that I can't move my hips at all. Okay. So I want to build that up. He needs to find a range where I can put my hands on the mat. Okay. I can take my leg across, clamp here high on his shoulder and actually use my core and my pinch and my hip pressure to bring his hand out. Okay. Through his clamp. All right. Now give me a little more resistance here. So this is all, sometimes an isometric drill where you actually don't get him to move, but that pressure that you're putting down is preventing him from doing anything to get out. And it is going to make your job easier when it comes to using your hands to peel those arms out. Okay. So again, if it's, I can't move it, it's just going to look like this as hard as I can. Okay. And then that'll again be for like 30 seconds on 30 seconds off, 30 seconds on 30 seconds off. Okay. And just to give you guys one more good drill you can do, okay, it's going to be a curling drill and a hip lifting drill. And that's going to help with your heel clamp. It's going to help you with getting your hips up to the guy, okay, in order to bring them back down. So this is just, it's from an arm bar position, okay, but you don't fucking touch his arms. <laughs> if you're holding his arm at all when you do this, you're breaking his arm. So don't touch it, okay. He gets himself in a good position to where he's not just going to fall over. And again, you can do stuff like this on bob dummies or heavy bags, or you can find appropriate bands that you can use. There's a lot of machinery out there that can develop this. Those are all pretty good methods, okay? But I do those and I supplement it with this type of training also, all right? So all I'm gonna be doing is get a good curl around his neck, get a good bite high in the shoulder. I'm going to be focusing on pinching my knees, curling my feet down, curling my heels down, and then using that to lift my hips up and off the ground, all right? And you should be able to bite any triangle or any arm bar hard enough with just your legs that, can you pick me up, you think? You should be able to pick up off the ground with just the clamp. So that is a good litmus test for how well you are doing mechanically on your arm bars, first off, okay? But that pressure, that leg clamp and pinch that you're gonna be doing is gonna to apply to a lot of different positions. So 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. This doesn't take a long time. It's how you fast track your pressure though, is you actually work on it. You don't just roll. If you wanna if you want to just show up and roll, sure, you will get good pressure in 10 years. Okay, it's why all the black belts that are like old school black belts have been trained for fucking 20 years. They're all very strong in jujitsu specific ways. They just train long enough to build that up naturally. But naturally is slow as fuck. Okay, we don't have time for that. We wanna win now. So we supplement our jujitsu with general athletic attribute training. Okay, very simple. And I encourage everyone to give it a shot. Little things like this go a long ways. So that's it for the triangle. It's just a little mini tutorial. I just want to get some good information out there. If you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the Discord. There'll be a link below. If you guys want to support the channel, jump in the Patreon. And like always, guys, eat your fucking Panda Express. Bye, have a great time. All right, guys, if you've ever wondered how do I manage to pull off some of the ridiculous bullshit that I do, go ahead and check out our instructionals on bgjfanatics.com. We don't hold any information back when we make an instructional. It's everything we actually do. We cover everything from gi and no gi buzzsaw, how to wrestle your way up to victory, how to assert dominance from back control, even to what sweet nothings you should whisper while you're on their back. And don't forget, we have what's probably the most successful knee slice system in the world just sitting up there for free, so you should absolutely go check that out. We also have a Patreon account called Wiltsy Brothers BJJ, where you can help me and Bird as we try to take over the world with our non-toxicity, all right? We currently have five tiers on offer, and those tiers offer things from uh, early access to videos, to rolling commentaries of your own, to perks in the Discord channel if you guys want to jump in. We have like 700 people in there right now. Absolutely should check it out if you just want to get more involved with me and Bird. And don't forget to check out our Instagram at AndrewWilty46 for some of those sweet, not quite YouTube friendly content. Currently I'm at about 42,000 subscribers and I think Gordon Ryan has 400,000. So uh, yeah, let's get to work on that. And lastly, don't forget to check out our affiliate channel, Pedago Submission Fighting. They offer some fucking seriously good, high quality production content, almost like the Daisy Fresh documentary you watched on Flow Grappling, okay? Professional editing, lots of heart and soul put into this. If you guys aren't watching that channel already, what the fuck are you doing with your lives? And guys, like always, don't forget to eat your fucking Panda Express.